tariffs are here, stock is low, and prices are high. And I have a burnt motor. Let's talk about it. So when it comes to arming in tall grass and using turtle mode, I am a complete maniac and I need to chill. Because if I don't, I'm gonna end up with motors that look like this. Which can cause more issues I don't feel like dealing with, like mid-flight failures, a blown ESC, and other performance issues. But much like everything else in the FPV hobby or even just RC in general, it can be fixed. So after spending three to four days on the world's largest search engine, I narrowed it down to the most important things that I needed in order to get this done. I needed the copper wire size, the amount of turns around each stator tooth, and I needed to know my winding pattern. The not so simplified, more in detailed list of things that I needed to get was a little bit long, not really kinda, you'll see. So. Not only did I need copper wire, but it had to be the same exact size as the copper wire I removed from the motor. And it had to be enameled. And because it's enameled, it has to be stripped. And in order to strip it, I needed to get a wire stripper. Which is where the DFA comes into play. And just to add a little bit of context, the copper wire needs to be stripped so that you can solder them back onto the wire leads. I also needed a gear puller to remove the base from the stator. I needed an ESC. I needed a servo tester, I needed alligator clips, and I needed a 4S battery. Oh, and I forgot to mention some god hands. If you build Gunpla or build Gundams, for those who aren't familiar with the terminology, you probably have these already or some version of these. They're butter. And I 3D printed a vise to hold the motor for testing and a wire holder to help with any soldering I needed to do. A quick honorable mention to this pine sill soldering iron. This thing is awesome, man. It's it it's changed my life. <laughs> it's it's great. But uh, somebody in my comment section put me onto this a while back, told me to try it out, so I gave it a shot. So shout out to Brandon W987. I went from zero to hero with this thing, man. Thank you very much. Now, when it comes to motor winding patterns, there's a lot. And it's based on the number of stator tooths or magnet poles in the outrunner or motor bell. So if we take a look at this right up here, we can find the most commonly used motor pattern for the type of motor that we have. In my case, since I have 12 stator poles and 14 magnets, it's this pattern here. You can also use this pattern. The next part is understanding what winding design you're gonna be using, whether that be delta or Y. And that topic can get pretty deep and is super tied into how you'd like the motor to perform. Your motor winding pattern is most likely going to be delta, but make sure you pay attention to that when you're unwinding your motor. And that goes hand in hand with the scheme we're going to be using to wire the motor back up. And there's several different types of motor winding schemes that we have to choose from, depending on the type of motor you have, of course. The most common winding schemes are going to be CD-ROM, DLRK, the DLRK Revolution, which is the one that I used, and LRK. And I'll attach a link in the description so you can read up on these in your free time. The TLDR of the winding scheme that I use is that it makes terminating the windings easier and neater. So if we take a look at this chart, we can see how the pattern and the scheme come together in this and the gobbledygook of letters starts to make a little more sense. Each capital letter is a clockwise turn and each lowercase letter is a counterclockwise turn. Now we can begin. Of course, we start by taking off the bell. If you have a motor that's similar to mine, you'll see a screw at the bottom of it and all you do is unscrew it and then you'll be able to remove the outrunner from the stator. Once the outrunner is removed, we can then use a gear puller to remove the base from the stator itself. It's super simple to use. All you do is screw the gear puller side plate so that the motor fits tightly between them, then screw the top of the gear puller clockwise until you see the motor base start to come off. Once the base is removed, we can then start to remove the heat shrink and the wire leads attached to the stator. And then once that's done, we should be left with just the stator and the copper windings. So at this point, it would be a great time for you to measure your copper wire. You're probably gonna have some sticking out somewhere. So just take a little bit and just use a caliper and figure out what size it is. And it would also be a good time to figure out if you are using a single or dual strand, you'll probably be able to see it, right? When you undo the motor. But if you don't know, you can go to, for example, iFlight, and it'll tell you right at the bottom of the specs, either single or dual strand. So keep that in mind. And if your copper wire is burnt, 
it's probably not going to be easy to unwind so make sure you set aside plenty of time to sit there and fiddle with it because it's probably going to be annoying and another note make sure you count the number of times you go around as you're unwinding the motor because you're going to need to go around those same number of times to wind it back so for my motor i believe i counted 10 so keep that in mind as well after all the wires stripped from the stator clean the stator with isopropyl alcohol and also i would highly highly recommend that you number each stator tooth because if you're following the diagram if you don't number the stator tooth it's going to be really hard to know where you are in the process now you're ready to rewind everything back and this is the complicated part because it's very difficult to make sure every turn around each stator tooth is perfect ideally you don't want the wire overlapping much unless you absolutely have to and make sure that you follow the color coding on the wiring diagram and also make sure that you have enough wire you're going to need a lot so cut a very long piece and just cut the excess later and you're going to need a long piece of wire to represent each color in the diagram once it's all wired up you should have something that looks like this now we can trim the wire twist the wire pairs tuck them under the wire we've ran across the stator and then trim them a little bit more at this point we should have three twisted wire pairs and the ends of these twisted wire pairs need to be prepped for soldering and the easiest way to do that is to remove the enamel coating from the wire. The cheapest way to do this is to purchase sulfuric acid and to just dab it on the wire ends and let it sit for a few minutes. It's about $20 or $30 from Amazon. The fastest way to do this is to get a wire stripper and that's going to run you about $70 from Amazon. You could also get a knife and just scrape off the enamel from the wire but Personally, with wire this thin, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I went with the wire stripper because it's safer, especially with my daughter running around everywhere. I don't have to worry about her getting into it randomly. I don't have to worry about disposing of it, wearing protection. I don't have to worry about it potentially getting on my hands or face and turning me into Harvey Dent. So wire stripper it is. It's also really easy to use. All you do is just put the end of the wire in the stripper, push down the button, and then just pull the wire out. And there you go all in about five seconds. At this point, once the copper wires are tinned, we can solder the leads back on, attach the base back to the stator, hammer it down to make sure it's on snug, and then apply the motor bell back onto the stator as well and screw it back in. We should now have a motor to test. And to do that, we're going to attach the alligator clips to each end of the motor wire, attach the other end of the alligator clip to each end of the ESC, connect the ESC to the three pin connector on the outside of the servo tester and then power it all up with a 4S battery. And if you aren't familiar with what a servo is, it's a device that provides precise control over the speed, acceleration, and position of another device. These can be found in RC planes, RC cars, robotics, etc. Once we plug the battery into the ESC, we should hear some beeps, we should see the motor do its little twitchy thingy, and then we should be good to start using the servo tester. So all we're going to do now is just turn the servo tester knob to the right and let the motor spin for a little bit. Periodically, make sure you check for any heat because if there is any heat, you're probably going to have to rewind the motor. And that's going to suck. I'm sorry. But if everything is all good, you now have a brand new motor. Congrats. All right. So the question we have to ask ourselves with all of this is, was it worth it? And my answer to that is, knowledge wise, yes. But it is cheaper to just buy a motor because a lot of people don't have the necessary equipment around to just do this whenever necessary. To buy everything needed to do this, it costed around $115. $70 of that was the wire stripper, but it is magnificent. It's amazing. It's well worth the money. But keep in mind you can buy sulfuric acid if you feel like handling that. It's about $20 to $30 on Amazon. And something else to think about here is how often are you burning out your motors? Because if it is often, there's probably a tuning problem somewhere that you need to fix or maybe you're just a freak like me and you just love turtle mode so much and you just can't stop. So <laughs> it's one or the other. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Did you find this video helpful? Have you done this before? Or would you rather just buy a new motor? Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Catch you later.